Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week's parasha, Kitsisa, talks about the grave sin of idolatry. Just after the Jewish people had received the Torah at Mount Sinai, eh, not more than 40 days later, they were already idol worshipping a golden calf. The Haftarah that we read in Shul this week, which is a Haftarah, is a part of the Tanakh, in which we have uh, the Neveim, the prophets, and usually the Haftorah is connected to the parasha, in which it discusses the main point of the parasha. So this Haftorah this week talks about uh, Ahab, the eighth king of Israel, who lived between three, uh, who ruled between 3021 and 3041 of uh, the Jewish calendar was for the most part a very wicked king and together with his famous wife Jezebel the daughter of king of Sidon they encouraged idolatry in the kingdom and through their reign uh, particularly they made the prophets sin with idol worship and they they idol worshiped mostly the the Canaanite uh, idol called the Baal the Baal which really the worship of this Baal was that people would throw their feces on it and this is a way in which they would worship this, uh, this uh, idol. And uh, what it represents is that they, they worship the material world because this is the, the excrement is the, mo the lowest of the lowest of the material world. So this is what they made important what was not important. So here uh, the Rebbe explains in Asiha, this Haftarah, in which what is the difference between idol worship and vacillation? The prophets were uh, condemned because they were idol worshiping this this uh, Baal, this uh, this idol. But the Jewish people were uh, vacillating; they were between uh, worshiping and not worshiping. So we see here that uh, on, the, on this Haftarah, the account of Prophet Elijah, this is a prophet that is in this parasha, his response to a troubled period of the Jewish history and in a situation that endangered the life of the Jewish people because of their ideolo ideological vagueness. And we see here also that the, that the question is here, what is the difference between vacillation and uh, idol worship. So we see that to understand Elijah's intention that, that he put the challenge on the prophets, he was challenging them, is we must begin by seeing the difference between these two forces. So we see here what is the root of idol worship to understand it, what does idol worship mean really, what is the sin of idol worship. So we understand that God created the world and that he recreates the world at every instant. So Jewish thought uh, comes from Abraham, Abraham Avinu. Before him, the people used to idol worship. It doesn't mean that they negate the existence of Hashem. They know there is a God that created the world. But nevertheless, the idea is that God just left the world. And so uh, we are ruled by other forces like nature, the stars, the sun, the moon, the trees, the universe. You hear so many people, oh, the forces of the universe, you know. So they give forces to these creations of God, but they don't really see God. And it's like when the, 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 the tree is being chopped and the only thing he sees is the axe. But he doesn't see that there's a, a wood chopper. And that's idol worship. So when we realize that behind all this scene, behind all these forces that God created to rule the world, to move the world, they do have an effect on the world. But at the end of the time, of the day, the one that is controlling these forces is Hashem. It's like when you go to a marionette show and you see the marionettes going with the strings, it's like if you would believe that the marionettes are the ones that are alive, but in reality there's somebody behind the scenes that is holding the strings and it's moving the marionettes. So it's the same way. So that's um, the root of idolatry. This is what, it, and it's a big, big sin. It's a big, uh, huge sin because 
we don't recognize the true the true God. We don't recognize where everything comes from. So Ramban attributes the origin of idolatry, idolatry to the fact that the creative energy by which God sustains the universe is channeled through natural forces. So God created a world in which he hid himself in nature. And it's more the word Teva, which is nature, is, uh, is the same gematria as the word Elohim, which is the name of God that is hidden in nature. So here we see that the stars and the planets uh, are ruled by God. It's not that God created them and he gave, gives them free reign. They have a certain energy and they have a certain, like the God, the, the sun has a program to rise at this time in this country and at this time in this country. It has like your, your wake up uh, watch, like your alarm clock. You put it to wake you up, but it doesn't mean that he is waking you up. You are the one that put it on, on the timer. So here the same, uh, idolatry begins when the intermediaries are worshipped in themselves as the rulers of human destiny. When people say, oh, those are the, the universe gave me this and the universe gave me that and the energy of the universe, that is idol worship. So Hasidut explains the difference between a father and a mother and the planetary influences. And this is very interesting because both seem to be causes of our existence. And yet one is commanded to honor one's parents and forbidden to worship the stars. So what's the difference? The reason is that God gave us the parents and the parents have free will. They do have free will and they have to raise their children and they do the best they can. They do it with their free will. So because of this, we have to honor our parents because they do have something to do in the raising of a child. But the stars and the moon and the planets, they're, everything about them is determined and they don't have free will. They don't choose. The sun doesn't choose to come out at six o'clock in the morning. Or maybe it will say, oh no, you know what? I'm gonna wake, I'm gonna come out tomorrow at eight o'clock at night. It doesn't happen like that. He is programmed and he doesn't have free will. He doesn't choose when to come in and to, when to, uh, when his sunrise and when his sunset. So they have no choice. So our gratitude belongs really to the one that created them and that brings him into being. So when you come out and it's a beautiful sunny day and you're basking in the rays of the sun, you don't say thank you sun, you have to say thank you Hashem. Thank you for making such a beautiful day. Thank you. I'm really enjoying it. And that is not a idol worship. But if you go out and you say, oh sun, I'm so happy. Thank you. You came out today. I love you. You're worshiping the sun. So idolatry then is mistaking the intermediary for the source. That's what it, I, idolatry means. And it's a very serious sin. So much so that the Talmud states, idolatry is so grave a sin that to reject it is as if one were committed to the whole Torah. So a person that rejects idolatry is committed to the whole Torah, even if he doesn't learn it. So here it, it, we see also that the impulse to idolatry is that according to this mistaken conception, one receives material benefits by the, pro, the, by the propitiating natural forces. So when you come out and the sun is shining and you feel this benefit of feeling the sun shining in you and then you're getting vitamin D and your vitamin D levels are okay and whatever the thing is, you are not giving, uh, you are not, uh, you are benefiting from it. So more the more you would end up worshiping the sun. So uh, here, he is not committed to idolatry as such, a Jew, and he is using it as a means to his own ends. And whereas in, when he serves God, he's doing so not on condition of receiving a, a reward, but for his own sake and with an undivided heart. The desire for material pursuits, a reward laid at the heart of the Baal worship. So as I said before, this, this prophet, this idol worship, this idol, the Baal Peor, everything was about material gain. And they worshiped him for the material gain. As I said before, they made the unimportant important and that was their sin. So we see here that there's another sin that was in which the Jewish people fell and it was the sin of vacillation. And we're gonna see why vacillation is even worse than a idol worship. Vacillation is characterized by a person being wishy-washy. He's not here and he's not there. He believes this, but you know what? I can also believe this. 
Uh, and this is not, um, this is complicated uh, because idolatry involves the genuine belief that the object of worship, the stars and the planets are the sources of the material welfare. But the person that vacillates is a person that's in doubt. He's doubting. He's wishy-washy. He's not, he's not like, no, I know it comes from Hashem. I know I made this money this week. It comes from God. God is my boss. He's the one that feeds me, not the person I work for. He's the one that gives me the food. So this um, wishy-washy person, he sometimes will be a, an idol worship and sometimes he will not be an idol worship. Sometimes he will recognize that this comes from God and sometimes he won't recognize it comes from God. So, or it may be that he believes that God and the forces of nature are in partnership. He may believe like, you know, God and the force of the sun are together in this. So he believes in both and that both must be worshiped. He believes that both should be worshiped. And however, idolatry, even in this muted form, and even if it is in the word of, or act only without any inward commitment, is so great a sin that it is in the nature of a Jew to be prepared to sacrifice his whole life uh, rather than participate into it. And you know, this week we go into the story of Purim in which the Jewish people were going to be uh, annihilated in one whole day. The, the whole final solution was going to take place. And at the end, they were ready to sacrifice their lives for being Jewish. And this is what saves a person from idol worship. This is what turns everything around. So in a number of ways, Vacillation is even worse than, the, than real idolatry. In general terms, idolatry is a graver act. It involves the absolute denial of Hashem. And because it doesn't deny that God exists, but it denies that God has something to do with your faith. And the complete opposition to Judaism. Firstly, when, when the genuine believer in idolatry comes to see that the Lord, eh, He is God, when a person realizes that God is God, that, that there's nothing else but Hashem, uh, he's complete, he does a complete teshuvah. He's able to transform that, the idolatry into a complete believing Hashem. So the person is completely for, uh, forgiven because he's able to come to that realization that God is the one that runs the world at every instant. Secondly, although the believer the believing idolater is guilty of a massive error of judgment in substituting the Baal for God and thus serving his relation, severing his relation with Hashem. He's nonetheless a person uh, that is open to spirituality because even though he's not serving God, he's serving something else. He has a spiritual part inside of himself that is still active. But a person that vacillates is completely disattached from spirituality. And uh, he's a person that will go in here and go there, and he, one day he does this, and one day he does another thing, and he will vacillate between the material world and, and the spiritual world, and he will never find a place. So here we see that the complete idolater idolatry will not influence the believing Jew. He has no effect on another person because a believing Jew will see an idolater and it's going to be like an allergic reaction, like I want nothing to do with this person. I, 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 I don't feel nothing uh, that attaches me to that type of person. But a person that is a vacillator can influence other Jews to end up being like him because he confuses people. One day he's uh, keeping Shabbat and eating kosher and, 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 and he's a true believer and then the next day He's, uh, he's eating shrimps in a restaurant because he's on a vacation in Madrid and they, it, that's what people eat there and he doesn't want to miss out. So this person is much harder to come to do Teshuvah because it's much harder for him to feel remorse and it's much harder for him to realize that he's not in the right track. He always finds an excuse for the things he does. So here we see that um, the vacillation is a uh, double-mindedness and is worse than idolatry. First, it is harder to turn from it with a true return. 
because the divided mind hides from itself the fact that it has sinned. Such a person can rationalize, like I said before. We can rationalize everything under the sun. We can auto-convince ourselves that we're doing the right thing. Oh, there's nothing else to eat. There's no kosher restaurants. Oh, nothing's going to happen if I eat uh, some some fish in the, from the market and I... They rationalize. And second, his integrity is destroyed. He has sold the spirit for the material world. For him, it's more important the material world, what people are going to think about him, uh, what is in fashion, what is the people, what are people eating now, and I don't want to miss on that. And there's this special fish that came out from the sea, and he has no skin, no fins and no scales, and how am I not going to try it? So he has exchanged the world to come, for the glitter of money and the shadow of honor. And third, he draws others into sin. So the path of return, this is the meaning of this haftara, and the primary challenge of the Jew, how long will you vacillate between the two opinions? And this was what the prophet Elijah was trying to bring the people back, trying to make them see their mistakes and trying to make them see how uh, erred uh, their way of thought was at the end of the Haftarah we read that the Jewish people do return in repentance and say twice the Lord he is God the Lord he is God and he, they say it twice and it makes an emphasis here because when the Jewish people received the Torah at Mount Sinai they said I am the Lord your God it was said only once so from here we learn that repentance the Shuva really takes a Jew higher from where he was. The only purpose that a person falls is to rise up. That's the only reason we would fall, is so we can rise up higher. So here, when the, the Jewish people said, the Lord, he's God, the Lord, he's God, and they said it twice, at this moment, they're higher than when the Jewish people were at Mount Sinai. So this is a clear implication for, Im, implication for today. The need is to return and to reach back to the heights of the spirit. And the whole purpose of the Shuvah is to bring us to a higher place and to bring us to our to our nature to who we really are to our essence to bring us back to that holiness that holy part of us that is connected to God and all Jews are interlinked so if one Jew sins we all come with him if one Jew does a mitzvah it raises everybody up and we are a collective people we, we it's not that one person lives by himself it's his life he doesn't do harm to anybody. I know people say, I know Margie, you know I'm not religious, but you know I'm a good person. I don't harm anybody. But in a collective way, every time that person eats a shrimp or eats a lobster or desecrates Shabbat, he's bringing everybody down. Because the Jewish people are as strong as the, as the, as the least strong link, as the weakest link. We're like a chain. And the link that is the weakest, that's as, as strong as we are. So every time a Jew strengthens himself and returns and does the shuva, he's making that chain more, more sturdy, more, it's making it stronger. So I leave you here. I wish you a, a beautiful week, that the joy of pouring is with you every day of your life and that we understand that we are all together, we're one, that's why we give Mishloa Manots, we give gifts between friends on, on Purim because it's to bring that Ahava, that love from one to another and to understand that we're interlinked and that we're one. So remember, live a little higher. Thank you.